Hi everyone, welcome back to week number nine of the Stone Barn CSA. It's Farmer Jack again, and I'm on location today around the farm, and we're gonna start doing this some more, visiting different spots around the property to show off some of the things that we're doing uh, uh, and the crops that are seasonally available right now. So we're excited again to have uh, some new things in the box. I'll show you a few of those. And then I wanna talk a little bit about the greenhouse tomatoes. Um, we have tomatoes in several spots around the farm, so we're gonna share that with you. Uh, we have some here in the greenhouse, mostly cherries, and then we also have some that are on the terrace and also out in the vegetable field. Um, so this week's box is uh, a bunch of carrots. These are uh, some of the mochum carrots and experimental varieties we're working with Bayo Seed, who's uh, uh, the largest organic seed company in the Netherlands and, and around the world. And we've been working with them for many years, over a decade really, trialing different varieties of carrots to see if we can compete with our beloved mochum, which is also one of their varieties. But uh, we're continually looking for a variety that can match and potentially even compete with that. So we hope you enjoy these fresh carrots. Um, we have more rainbow Swiss chard here. Um, really big, beautiful summer leaves for a bit of cooking there. Um, shishito peppers, um, still my favorite snack this time of year. A little quick flash with oil. Um, we have some baby cabbages. There's uh, several different types, colors, but this purple cabbage here is an example of a a great summer salad, really. Um, we're always trying to encourage people at this time of year when it's still really hot and bright, long days, it doesn't make the lettuce taste great this time of year. Generally speaking, the salads have a little bit of bitterness in them. So we like to kind of promote this idea of eating raw cabbage salads to take over that break of time in the middle of summer before the romaines and all the lettuces start to come back in and uh, later in August. Um, and our potato crop continues to roll out here. This is uh, a pound and a half or so, two pounds of uh, cuca golds. This is a great local New York bred potato, very similar to Yukon gold, but much more productive for us. And actually we enjoy this uh, cooking this uh, better than the Yukon golds. Uh, they are sort of regionally specific. So cuca gold after the cuca lake in the Finger Lakes here bred at Cornell. This is a really wonderful buttery potato. I like to roast these things. Uh, if you boil them, just do it quickly because they have a tendency to break down really fast when they're young like this. Um, we have some herbs for you too this week. Uh, a nice bundle of cilantro. As the tomatoes continue to come on, we'll, we'll keep passing on the cilantro for salsas and things like that. And we have a bundle of dill again for you guys. Fresh, young, unflowered dill to mix into whatever you want to do fresh summer. So now I want to talk a little bit about our tomatoes. We're beginning this week with a half pint of tomatoes. This is a full half pint of what we call cherry bomb. It came out of the greenhouse, you can see. But I'm going to talk to you about the different varieties that may also be showing up in your box. Uh, this block behind us is a 2,000 square foot block in soil uh, tomatoes. There are several different varieties to talk about. So since this box has cherry bomb in it, I'll talk about that one first. This is a really wonderful new variety tomato. Um, it's a few years old. We really enjoy it. It's very productive for us and nice and sweet. A little larger than most of the other cherries and it has this really great texture. Also holds on to its uh, sepal too, which some people like just for display or even like a, a cook to confit or, or cook down. They're, they're really nice. They keep the top on. Um, we have uh, two different kinds of tomatoes. We'll show you next week probably our sun gold patch that we have tons of. We generally, if everyone doesn't know sun gold, you will when you taste it. Um, this is one that is a perennial favorite for most everyone we know. Uh, it is a very sweet, bright, crisp, and, uh, and turgid little thing. They, they pop in your mouth and they're usually pretty small and very sweet. Um, sun gold tomatoes here coming out and also by the same Japanese breeder that brought sun gold is uh, another rival to that that 
we're using it tends to not split as easy. So we're competing the two to see if they have a similar flavor and, and don't burst as quickly when we bring them home. Uh, we also have a couple varieties of plums. This is really our old favorite. This is what we call Montesino. It's a very crisp, nice, thick flesh tomato. Really like this one a lot. Uh, and its rival is a new one being bred by Johnny's Seed. That's a slightly more beefy and hard and competitive flavor, just a little bit larger and uh, potentially higher yielding. We'll see how that goes. Um, we have two salad type tomatoes that may end up in there. This one we call Mountain Magic. Um, besides being delicious and sweet, it's also very disease resistant. It's one of the best disease resistant tomatoes that are out there for flavor. And when we've had issues with late blight and things like that in the past, which are very common for tomatoes in wet conditions, this one is really a champ. So we've enjoyed growing this one. And its companion, its orange companion, is one we call clementine, which is just as sweet and nice to mix in the salads together. Um, we have two new cherries this year that we're playing with from a friend in California, a breeder. Uh, this one is called Napa Rosé, and this one's called Napa Chardonnay. And you'll see these two very nice color, um, soft body, um, really kind of a fresh eater. And the last one in this greenhouse here is called Pomodorino de Algeria. So this is a tomato that we brought over from uh, Mount Vesuvius. It was a, a gift to me many years ago. We've been saving it as a plum variety. It has this really nice long point on the bottom. This tomato is actually meant to be eaten later in the season, but it's so delicious and sweet and thick walled that uh, we eat it pretty much all season as it grows out. Uh, traditionally speaking, this tomato was saved and hung in the rafters of the house to be eaten throughout the winter. It's a very special variety. This is winters in Italy, of course, not quite the same way, but we're really enjoying this tomato. Again, this is our own breeding. Um, we've had this now for seven or eight years. So that's what we have in the greenhouse. We really look forward to showing you all the rest of the tomato varieties we have in the coming weeks as um, all these great, big, large slicing heirlooms come into being ripe. So thanks for listening. We can't wait to see you this week and hope you're really enjoying um, the abundance of, of produce that we have for you. Uh, keep an eye out in the store for fresh chickens and other frozen meats that are in there, flower bouquets, and any fruit that might be popping up from the farm. Uh, especially right now, you might find some pints of blueberries in there. So have a great week. See you later.